Rivian just rolled out an insanely impressive new Rivian R1T electric pickup truck. Now the Rivian R1S will benefit from this as well, but I mean, 410 miles of range in a pickup truck, everyone said, no, that wasn't gonna happen. I mean, it's EVs, their range sucks, right? Pickup trucks, their bricks, range would be terrible. Well, not only has Rivian rolled out this range improvement across the entire range, in fact, all of their models have improved in range, They've also unveiled a new motor, which is helping them achieve this range. I've got to say, I'm impressed. I know a lot of people that want an, a Rivian R1T here in Australia. Rivian, send them over here. People will certainly buy them, even for over 100,000 Australian dollars. If that's what it's gonna cost, I'm guaranteeing you people will be willing to pay it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. And I just had it, someone asked me, a few people asked me, when will we have pickup trucks here in Australia that are electric? In fact, it was within the last five hours that are electric and that can tow 3000 kilos or more. Well, Rivian's making them. Rivian, you said you'd bring them to Australia. When's it gonna be? When are you gonna do it? You did say it would happen. So I really wanna know when it's going to actually happen. Rivian has joined the 400 mile club, which is pretty insane because as far as I can tell, this is the first electric pickup truck ever to have 410 miles of range. Like an actual product you can really buy, not just a theoretical item. Yeah, it's real. Now, I'm not mocking the Cybertruck here at all. It might have 410 miles as well. It might have more than that. I have no idea. I'm just saying there's been other manufacturers with these products that have had amazing claims, but you never end up seeing the real thing. Anyhow, with the max pack option and 21 inch wheels, imagine if you put smaller wheels on it. Why would you want 21 inch wheels on a pickup truck anyway? That's stupid. I reckon put 17s on there, um, all terrain tires, something that isn't too high of an aggressive profile so you're not sacrificing too much range. I think you'd get even more range than this. This 21 inch wheel is gonna lower that range, but anyone with, any, even with those, it surprisingly gets an EPA estimated range of 410 miles. I think if you put 17s on it, you might be able to get maybe 430, which is insanely impressive. Equipped with a large battery pack, the R1T has a range of 352 miles. So that's the smaller battery pack. So this, this mega pack is very, very big. Realistically for a vehicle this size and weight, 410 miles of range in the longest version, 352 miles of range in the less long version, they're both seriously impressive. Both of them come with 21 inch wheels. And I, I don't really understand why they've gone with 21s. I mean, are Americans really into those? In, here in Australia, we don't have any pickup trucks. There's not a single model of pickup truck at all, nothing. And we love pickup trucks just like you guys do. Our best selling cars here in Australia are Utes, pickup trucks, same thing. We import thousands of American ones. We convert them from left-hand drive to right-hand drive. It's a very expensive, very laborious process. People do it and they still sell heaps of them but we don't have any with 21 inch wheels, none. It's just, there's no demand for cars here. We'll pick up trucks with those massive rims on them. It just doesn't add up for mostly because they're terrible for going off road, number one. And like I said, they're bad for your range anyway. Well, what's the point of them? Anyway, that's just a rhetorical question there. Maybe someone knows the answer. So what's going on here? What have Rivian actually done? Well, they've employed their new Enduro motor. What is the Enduro motor? Well, first of all, RJ Scarringe, the CEO of Rivian, made a pretty good quote recently. A lot of people have mentioned this. He said that on the Enduro motor that Rivian have, well, revealed, in fact, they've had this for a while now, but not much has been said about it. More than just what this motor represents in terms of performance or efficiency or range, it's also emblematic of the capabilities we have as an organization today. This new drive unit incorporates a gearbox and power unit with the motor, and it's less expensive to build. Rivian's vehicles cost money. They cost a lot of money to build. That's the truth. Rivian loses money on them, which is fair. I think if they made three times as many, they may not lose any money. They may be breaking even. That's what they need to do, increase production. That's what Tesla had to do to make a profit. That's what everyone has to do, and I reckon they'll get there. This new motor allows Rivian to offer a base model, though, that's $8,000 less compared with the third party motor that Rivian launched with the company said initially. 
The ONT pickup now starts at $74,800 US dollars. It's not cheap, but hey, Americans are paying a lot of money for pickup trucks for Australians. So is most people now these days. So this isn't like it's just confined to EVs. Pickup trucks now are fairly pricey. However, the previous starting price was $79,800. So this new innovation from Rivian has allowed them to cut the price by $5,000 US dollars. And they needed to do this because the truth is there's only so many people willing to pay $80,000 US dollars for the base model version of a vehicle. With two motor options now, Rivian has greater flexibility to maintain production if one of them is in short supply. But I can tell you now, Rivian has another trick up its sleeve, which will change the game for the company far more than anything else the company has ever done in its history. I'll tell you what that is at the end of the video. If I compare the launch of the Enduro Drive unit to what we went through for the vehicle, Scarring said, the predictability of the bring up has been much more seamless. Now, I don't know what that means, but anyway, make of that as what you will. Rivian assembles the Enduro unit at a new 620,000 square foot addition to the assembly plant. Tim Fallon, Vice President for Manufacturing Operations said during a media event, really excited about what we're doing as we continue to ramp. He pointed to Rivian's forecast that it will more than double vehicle production this year. That's a good change. If they double it again next year, then the following year, they're on the right track. All major components, including the motor, gearbox, and inverter are manufactured in-house for seamless integration and optimized efficiency, the company said. The Enduro motor platform will serve as the foundation for motors planned for Rivian's next generation R2 vehicle platform starting in 2026. The R2 platform is critical for Rivian, a lot like Ford's second generation EV platform that they say will enable it to actually make a profit off EVs. It's been developed, Rivian's and Ford's have been developed for less expensive, smaller vehicles that will expand Rivian's consumer base from its current lineup of large vehicles, the R1T, the R1S, and the EDV commercial van. Rivian began making its consumer R1 vehicles with the Enduro in May after converting EDV van production to the new motor earlier in the year. The R1 vehicles can still be configured with the previous drive unit that was being made using outside supplier components. Now, by adding the Enduro as the standard motor, Rivian can expand its production numbers since it has developed a better supply chain for the in-house drive unit. And sometimes that's one of the benefits of vertical integration. You can control your own destiny to a much better degree. In addition, the Enduro uses different power semiconductors than the original quad motor drive, meaning it has two supply streams to produce EV motors. Rivian said in August that it expected to make 52,000 vehicles this year, compared with 25,000 in 2022. Production was limited last year because of a lack of semiconductors, say Rivian, for the outsourced quad motor drive unit. Now, I don't think that's actually true. I think there was numerous reasons for why production was limited, but it doesn't matter they're on track to hit their numbers this year, which is very unusual for one of these companies. I mean, Lucid is just miles away, Xpeng, Neo, they're nowhere near their you know, estimates for production this year. In its latest earnings filing, the company reported a net loss of 1.2 billion in the second quarter, compared with 1.7 billion in the same quarter last year. Revenue tripled to 1.1 billion on improving production and deliveries. Rivian did not give cost savings for the Enduro alone though. However, they said the combination of the Enduro drive unit with a lower cost battery pack in the EDV van, believed to be lithium ion phosphate, has reduced material costs by 35%. Rivian plans to use the less expensive batteries with lithium ion phosphate chemistry in its consumer vehicles in the future to reduce costs. This is how Rivian can make a profit selling vehicles. And I've said this a few times, it needs to be said again. Rivian does have a pathway to profitability. It's LFP. They know it. They've said this on a number of occasions. Why is it that the North American battery industry, I mean, Ford, General Motors, Ford to a lesser extent than General Motors, but General Motors is 100% in on uh, NMC, NCA chemistry, lithium ternary batteries. So are the majority of automakers in North America. The only ones that are not, uh, well, Ford with their trying to get their CATL 
licensing deal so they can build a lithium ion phosphate battery factory. And it's said to be that Tesla is wanting to do the same thing. But everyone else is just all in on non-LFP batteries. However, Ford and Rivian saying the only way that they can really get to profitability and even Tesla, it was the same sort of issue for them, was by using LFP. Less recalls, less problems, much less price as well. Performance. The original quad motor configuration with a motor for each wheel does have performance advantages over the dual motor enduro setup, which has a motor at each axle driving two wheels. All R1 vehicles have all wheel drive. The quad motor setup has 835 horsepower. It's very fast, compared with 533 horsepower for the dual motor enduro configuration. Now to give you an idea on the performance, it easily beats a Ford Ranger Raptor, dominates it, but it annihilates the much quicker Ford F-150 Raptor as well. Rivian does offer a performance version of the Enduro system with 665 horsepower as a $5,000 option. So, of course, the Enduro version with two motors has less power, but it's got way more power than you realistically need. If you want to get more power in that dual motor version, pay an extra five grand, you get an extra 100 horsepower. In a demonstration to show the capabilities of the Enduro drivetrain, Rivian allowed visitors to drive the R1T with the quad motor setup and the dual motor configuration. Both variants were really fast. In fact, ridiculously fast. The quad motor did it in three seconds, zero to 60 miles an hour, or zero to about 98 kilometers an hour, and the dual motor performance in 3.5. So the non-performance, probably doing it around four seconds. It's just, you don't even need anywhere near that performance. That means the non-performance version of Rivian's cheapest pickup truck easily dominates Ford's F-150 Raptor. Well, I think RJ Scarringe was right. Buying an internal combustion engine vehicle right now it's a lot like building a horse barn in 1910. The future of the pickup truck is here, and it's most certainly not powered by any kind of engine. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.